This week's video has been sponsored by Star Trek Fleet Command, the award-winning MMO that you can play for free right now on iOS, Android and PC by using the link in the description or by scanning the QR code on screen. This will allow you to fight Starfleet's most iconic enemy, the Borg, who have returned in a series of brand new missions inspired by their appearances in Star Trek The Next Generation. You can help out Hugh, save a naive pack led and protect your AI assistant from assimilation. Joining the game alongside these missions are the brand new Fleet Commanders, well known heroes and villains that will oversee strategy from the shiny new command centre, providing powerful bonuses to your fleet. These new features join the expansive amount of content already available across the game. You can construct fleets of your favourite ships and recruit legendary officers to staff them as they expand your territory, exterminate your rivals, exploit the resources they find and explore strange new worlds. Do all this and more for free by downloading Star Trek Fleet Command, available on iOS, Android and PC through the link in the description or by scanning the QR code on screen. Hey everyone, I'm Hujiwana and welcome back to Space Dock, where we are back with our realistic weapon series. This time it's about those Macrons as I mentioned in the particle weapons video. You may have already heard of these going by a different name like dust guns or sandcasters, but if you didn't know, Macrons are teeny tiny dust sized particles fired at high velocities from accelerators. The word Macron itself was coined in the 60s, with the idea being to use them as a potential method of fusion power, but I'll get more into that later. For now though, we have to define just what a Macron is. Generally speaking, these are artificially accelerated bits of material that are only micrometers in size, or 0.000001 meters, the size of the smallest bacteria. For comparison, an electron fired from a particle beam is significantly smaller, at only 0.000000002 meters in diameter, with standard kinetics in sci-fi able to go up to, well, a bit bigger than this. For a visual point of reference, look at this carbon filament that is only 6 micrometers in width, compared to a 20 micrometer width hair. The interesting thing about objects this small is that they can take advantage of the square cube law, something which is shared by certain types of radiator. And yes, that video is still coming, but there was a little movie recently that you may have seen that we'd love to use footage from, so subscribe now for when that video comes out. But the square cube law, which basically says that the volume of an object goes up much faster than its surface area does. After that, the volume of an object combined with its density leads right along to its mass. So that means that teeny tiny little objects have a very high surface area to mass ratio, and for macrons that means it's very easy to attach an electrical charge to their surface. This is done way before you fire it, because it can take a while to charge up, but once done its low mass means it'll be easy to accelerate with that charge. The smaller your macron is, the bigger the charge to mass ratio gets, and the easier it is to accelerate. This can be improved further with hollow macrons, which have lower mass for the same surface area, so the ratio goes higher yet again. You've got to be careful when charging them up though, because if you overcharge it, the electrons on them will decide it's too crowded and will want to leave, which heats up the macron which destroys it. Different materials have different maximum charge limits and one may be better than the other for getting big charge numbers, but you also need to consider the strength of whatever you use. The charge on the macron surface may end up getting higher than what it can physically handle, ripping it apart. If you get right down to it, we end up in the world of that ever so versatile element, carbon. Specifically really tiny carbon fibres, ones so small they are basically carbon nanotubes, wrapped up in a hollow ball. But using balls for weapons is so 16th century, are we just making a high tech musket for ants here? Instead of that we can get yet more surface area for the same mass by making it into a tube. Our macrons become macaroni. But what do we actually fire these out of? Electrostatic accelerators of course, which is the whole reason we wanted that charge to mass ratio to be so high in the first place. We can't use regular high velocity kinetic weapons like miniature railguns or coil guns because our macron aroni simply would not survive, so we are left with the power of static electricity, which is actually a really common method of accelerating stuff already, such as in certain types of ion engine. 
I'm not going to get into the super nitty gritty of electrostatic accelerators here, but generally speaking its shape is going to be very similar to those I talked about in the particle accelerator video. Big long linear accelerators or circular ones, or perhaps a NASCAR track style option that combines both of these approaches. There are pluses and minuses to both, such as being only able to send a macron down the length of a linear accelerator once. Circular ones you can at least send them through over and over for higher velocities, but you need strong magnets to hold them in. You can instead make larger radius loops to lower the strength of the magnets you need, but well, larger things are larger, and so you make your spacecraft larger too. But there's also a funky method of acceleration where you push the macrons along with a beam of ions. The ion beam and macron never touch thanks to them both having the same electric charges repelling each other, and there's not even a need here for crazy high power energies like in a standard particle accelerator weapon. The downside is our macron and tubes bend out of shape, so we have to go back to using spheres, or even better, little tiny plates, like miniature disc shaped sails. And since they are so very very small, the barrel of the gun is also going to be tiny, so we can pack a lot of them onto our spacecraft, each having an utterly absurd fire rate measured not in rounds per minute, but hertz, or even kilohertz. So our macrons get fired off in great streams of high velocity dust which then erodes through whatever they hit. Upon impact, every individual macron makes a little crater, so thousands upon thousands of them can really dig away at a target, and since they are so tiny you can carry an awful lot of them. After being fired, it's a good idea to neutralise the charge of the macrons, leaving them to go on their merry little way, with each macron being practically invisible. They are so tiny that any heat they may have picked up from acceleration is radiated away very fast, so infrared sensors can't spot them. Radar can't see them because each macron is far smaller than the wavelength radar operates in, and even LiDAR would struggle. That said, radar can't see individual drops of water, but can see rain, so a whole cloud of macrons would be vaguely visible. But even if you did see the incoming dust cloud in the few seconds before it hit, you can't really do anything about it except try and manoeuvre out of the way. The macrons have been neutralised so you can't deflect them, and you can't charge them up from range either because that takes time. You can't burn them away with lasers because they are so small they radiate heat away faster than they receive it, and any sweeping effect from a laser would be negligible at the velocities the macrons are moving at. Not even multiple layer Whipple shields, those things specifically designed to prevent damage from high velocity kinetic impacts, can do much because the first macron just makes a hole for the next macron right behind it. However, it is possible to create an actively moving, self-repairing physical shield that is basically just a trapped dust cloud. The macrons would hit this and make a hole in it while disintegrating, but crucially, as it is a moving cloud shield, the hole just gets filled up again or moved out of the way before the next macron in line arrives, unless it was really close behind. The downside is that a dust shield needs to be actively maintained, and can just be swept out of the way by energy weapons or nukes. But this does set up a nice rock paper scissors thing with weapons and defences though. There is also a little party trick that macrons have that I alluded to at the start of the video. If you make your hollow macrons big enough, you can actually put a payload inside them. A nuclear payload. Stick fissile material inside a tiny little ball and throw it hard enough at something, and you can trigger a nuclear reaction in it. That means you can get far more energy out of a macron impact than you actually put into it with your accelerator, thanks to releasing all that energy tied up in the atoms themselves. This micro-fission reaction can even reach several thousand times more energy output than input, which you can harness for power generation or propulsion, or just sheer damage if used as a weapon. Those little craters made on impact get a lot bigger this way. If you get even higher velocities, way up above 100 km per second, this trick also works with fusion fuel as well. Microfusion in this manner can be used for even better power generation or spacecraft propulsion, and as fusion fuel isn't radioactive, it's much safer to use and manufacture as well. There's just the challenge of yeeting them fast enough to trigger. But if you can pull it off, then you'd have some crazy potential for zooming around the solar system. This thing reaches like expanse levels when used as an engine. Now just imagine the potential when used as a weapon. Macrons can't be seen, they can't be deflected, they are difficult to armour against, and 
if given a payload, they can deliver significantly more energy to the target than the amount that the weapon spent to fire them. With a bit of prep time to make the ammo and charge it, you can end up with a comparatively low power device that can be used to rapidly travel the solar system, or a weapon that is capable of doing absolutely devastating damage. Okay. Thank you for watching this video on Macrons. If you enjoyed it, then please subscribe for more. There's plenty of realistic weapon stuff to talk about in future. If you want to support the channel more directly, you can do so right here on YouTube by giving a super thanks or by becoming a channel member. You can also join our Patreon and get our Space Fighter design reference book to keep for yourself. Thank you so much if you choose to support us, and I'll see you next time.